here to present my step-by-step -step tutorial on this sweater with all the details. I saw this sweater, truth be told, not on Pinterest, just on the internet, so I can't find the source. Or maybe it was a Pinterest, I don't really know. And I was wildly inspired and I just thought, I want it, I want the same! Copen isn't cool, so I decided to take some details as a basis and add some colors. Here's what came out. In the process, I got scared that I wouldn't have enough yarn for the sleeves, so I had to change the concept. All in all, I'm actually glad about it. This is my first super high quality my hair sweater. I'm really glad that it came out like this, as I didn't want to copy it and I, I wanted to have something by my own. By the way, I would be really grateful for your like and subscription. I tried really hard to do this tutorial. I used top quality Italian yarn. One skein cost me $3.75. Bought it at a wholesale market in Moscow. It took 14 skeins for the cardigan. So, at $55 for cardigan made of my hair plus silk sounds very attractive by today's standards. The yarn itself is very soft. Don't hesitate to spend a little more. I'm happy that I decided to splurge because the light fluffiness and practically no itchiness not only sounds but also feels extremely comfortable. And also, I miss the burgundy color so much. I have very few things in my wardrobe in this color. I knit it with the Chinese needles for $1.5. The size seems to be 2.5. As you can see, I don't know. Uh, sorry, but I don't have the packaging anymore, but I think it's 2.5. Besides them, nothing unusual is needed. Uh, just scissors, stitch markers and buttons. I think that's all that you will need. By the way, I didn't feel any problems with them at all, so nothing snagged anywhere and everything was fine. Why everybody is using some expensive needles uh, that are so costly? I, I'm just curious, I haven't tried them. Put your ideas in comments, please. What should I try? Next, there will be a dry part about the preparatory steps. It's quite important to listen to them, uh, so as if something goes wrong, you would know what to do. So, go! Spend some time making your sample to make the right measurements. I'm doing a small sample, not 10 on 10, where I can count the number of rows and stitches that fit for the project. I've made a sample with one thread, then added a second one, and it turned out obviously better. I will use two threads to knitting. These measurements are needed for the rib and for the pattern itself. I'll show how we're going to use it on the next step, when we will measure the parts of the cardigan. While we're on this point, I want to emphasize that each pattern has requirements. The rib must be multiple by 3, plus one stitch for the pattern, and the pattern must be multiple by 4. Let me make the example for the rib. You need to cast on, to follow the instructions, the number of stitches multiple by 3, plus one stitch, plus two edge stitches. For example, you will cast on 15 stitches, where 12 are multiple by 3, plus one stitch, plus two edge stitches. Uh, you can also cast on 12, 18, and so on. I think you got the point. It's a bottom-up cardigan, so it starts from the lower edge of the garment, number one, and works upwards. I want it to be almost seamless, so we will need the front and back simultaneously in a single piece to the armholes from the rib through the right front, then back, then left front and the other rib. Then join the pieces, back and front, in a shoulder line and work the sleeves in rounds from the armholes to the potential cuffs. Based on the measurements of the sample, for the bottom rib you need to need 4 cm or 6 rows. I used the measurements from the sample as it has 3 rows, which is equal to 2 cm. Accordingly, in order to need 4 rows, I need to multiply 4 cm by 3 rows and divide by 2 cm according to the formula. It turns out that 6 rows are 4 cm. I got that there are elementary numbers here, but the rest is calculated by absolutely the same logic. Using it, we calculate the width of the garment. I need a width of 54 cm, which is equal to this, from this point to this point. I need to multiply by 2 for the back, as 
they are equal. It turns out 258 stitches that I need to cast on in order to maintain the desired width. It's worth noting that the edge ribs, where the buttons are, will overlap each other, so one of rib is included in the width of calculations only once. As the pattern of my ribbing needs to be multiplied by 3, including edge stitches and plus one additional stitch on each side of the ribbing, the number of my stitches should be multiplied by 3, so everything matches up. Let's move on to the ribbing of the edges, where the buttons are attached, number 2. Each ribbing is 4.5 cm, which is equivalent to 12 stitches, including edge stitches. I rarely count um, the number of rows when knitting in high, so I will rely on centimeters, approximately 44. Left and right front panels are indicated by number 3 before dividing from this point. Since the total width of the garment is 54 cm, I need to subtract one ribbing, for example this, minus 4 cm, as it will be overlaid, and I will get 50 cm for both panels. Therefore, each of them is approximately 25 cm. Multiply 25 by 12 and divide by 5.5 cm, according to our sample, so we will have 55 stitches for the main pattern. Additionally, since my pattern needs to be multiplied by 4, I will add 1 to have 56 pattern stitches for one panel. In terms of length, it should fit approximately 12.5 diamonds or 22 centimeters. I will explain how to knit the neckline in a separate section at the neckline time step. In terms of armhole length, this part is equal to 20 cm, which is approximately 10.5 diamonds. The slips in width are accordingly equal to 20, as mentioned earlier, and their length for me, I am 184 cm, is 45 cm. I knitted them with the same ribbing pattern and didn't count the number of stitches. I will explain this separately at the armholes timestamp. This is our formula for the stitches. We have two fronts, we have two ribs, we have one back, and we need to take out one rib from back as it will be overlaid by the other on the front. So we have 1260 stitches plus one for the right division, so 261 stitches to cast on. As mentioned earlier, we will begin knitting with the bottom ribbing and pattern mark test number one and two. This part of garment is the simplest but durable and it's knitted with the front and back simultaneously in one single piece up to the armholes. This and this. To start, knit the bottom ribbing, this one, number, number one, then begin the edge ribbing and pick up the yarn for the second white color to create the pattern. I will demonstrate how to knit both patterns in this video on this cardigan. Additionally, I have recorded a separate video for the future reference as an easy to watch tutorial. The sequences of stitches look like a V. First is edge stitch, between V sequences are pearl stitches. The second edge stitch consists of two colors, white and bordeaux. Now we are going to make a bottom ribbing. It's a two row repeat knitting pattern. As you can see, the wrong side looks also like a rib, but it isn't that cool. Cast on and repeat ribbing pattern for 261 stitches for a bottom. I will also show you the pattern later. Now we need to divide 12 stitches from each side for edge ribbing. Starting with 12 stitch, we will use white yarn for the main pattern. Moving on to the simultaneous single piece to the armholes, the only first row before starting the main pattern you should knit or purl. It's better if knit stitches would be on the right side. The main pattern is 12 row repeat and creates a diamond. But the first row isn't part of the pattern, so make the first row knitted. We have four threads, each going to its own ball of yarn. It's very important not to mix up them and to keep track of them, so as not to struggle with untangling. 
The ribbon has the same pattern as we saw in the tutorial. 12 stitches are knitted absolutely the same way. Purl stitch, then knit 2 stitches together 2 times through the back loop. Purl Knit 2 stitches together through the back loop 2 times until the end of the edge. I remind you, knit the first row with white yarn as a starting row before following the pattern steps. Knit the first and second stitch through the back loop and then we will start making the fourth stitch repeat until the end of the row. Bring the thread in front and slip the next three stitches through the back loops like this. And then knit through the back loop again. Repeat this report until the end of the row and stop before the second ribbon. One, two, three, This ribbon is absolutely the same, I haven't filmed it, so I decided to record small parts here, just to make sure you are doing everything ok. Knit or purl the two colored edge stitch of the ribbon and repeat the rib. Purl stitch, then knit two stitches together two times through the back loop. Purl, knit 2 stitches together through the back loop 2 times until the end of the edge. The edge stitch is better to purl here. Flip our work over like this and now we go back. Knit the wrong side row of the ribbing. Purl. Knit. Purl. Slip with the yarn on the front side. And repeat. Knit. Purl. Slip. and purl the edge stitch. As for the pattern, every even row we purl the stitches. Continue the even roll for the rib as we just did. Pull the white yarn tighter. Knit. Pearl. Slip. Knit. Purl. Slip. Knit. 
we've made the second row. Flip our work over and repeat the first row. Curl. Knit two stitches together two times through the back loop and repeat. Pull the thread tighter. The pattern repeats exactly the same way. Knit, knit and pass the thread in front of the work through three stitches. Repeat until the end of the row. One, Two, three, one, two, three, you will have the ribbing. So need two colors here and repeat the ribbing pattern for all rows. Pearl, knit two stitches together two times through the back loop and repeat. The last edge stitch is better to purl. The fourth row is the same as the second. Knit, purl, slip and repeat. I think I won't repeat this dark blue example video here, as you are already familiar with the pattern for ribbing. Just repeat the second ribbing the same as the first in the row. You definitely can do this. The pattern for the fourth row is the same for all even rows, just purl all stitches. The rip is the same as we did for even rows, knit, purl, slip, repeat. For fifth row for ribbing is the same as the first, but the fifth row pattern is different. See you there. Here we are. Knit the first two stitches through the back loop and here we need to pick up these threads and knit them together with the stitch in the middle to create a honeycomb. Knit and go under the threads, we will repeat this, don't worry. Knit the next three stitches. Then go under these threads and knit them under them. Repeat. Knit three stitches. Go under these threads and knit them under threads. Repeat the pattern until the end of the row. Repeat the second row. 
The seventh row of ribbing is the same as the first one. The first three stitches will be under the thread at the beginning of the pattern. Slip them through the back loop and knit. Repeat for the next four stitches the same way. One, two, three, knit and repeat until the end of the row. The eighth row is the same as the second row. Repeat the ninth row as the seventh. Repeat the second row. The eleventh rib is the same as the first. Now we are going to go under the threads, knit the first stitch and go under the threads to knit the next stitch and pull it through the threads. Then knit three stitches and repeat. Go under the threads to knit the next stitch and pull it through them. Repeat the second row and start from the first repeating these 12 rows. This is the pattern. See you after walking 12 and half diamonds. Now we need to divide the piece onto two fronts and back, leaving armholes for the sleeves. I want to note that I miscalculated and the width of the back turned out to be smaller than the length of the two fronts. However, this can be fixed. I needed the back of the sleeve longer on the back side. In the following video I will measure the piece with a tape measure and place markers to divide it. This is our back side, it's approximately 50 cm, put markers by all sides. The left front is 25 cm and is equal to the right front. The rib is 4.5. We divided the panels with marker 1, marker 2 and now we have right front which is going to be knitted separately we have the back panel, which is also gonna be knitted by his own, and the left panel. Prepare second circular needles or the thread to move all stitches after right front. First, we work stitches up to the first armhole marker. This is our right panel. Move all left stitches. I use the needle with the thread. We are here in the end of the row and all our stitches are transferred and the second needle is free for now. I am making sure to hold thread together so as not to lose stitches. Let's move on to the right front. The right front can be divided into two parts. The first part goes up to the red dotted line. Simply knit up the pattern with the remaining stitches. The second part is 
from the red to the purple line for knitting the neckline, which I will explain in the video later. The third part is the shoulder shoulder rules, which will also be explained later. The left front will be knitted in an exactly same way, but in the mirror opposite. This is the even row with all pearl stitches, and repeat the second row of the rib. Flipping over and continue to knit the pattern up to the neckline. It's 8.5 diamonds up. Now we move on to the most challenging part, knitting the neckline. However, once you understand it, it becomes a relatively simple part of the cardigan. Everything will be shown in the video as an example. For now, I will explain the decreases we will make. If you would like me to record a separate video, please leave a comment. We shape the neckline by making a series of decreases in a particular pattern. In the first rows, there will be more decreases. I will show you. You see, 3, 4, 2, 1, 1, 1. Uh, so, in the first rows, there will be more decreases, and then one stitch will be decreased in each subsequent row. I have already counted the stitches for the neckline opening and desired high in rows beforehand. This will create a slightly square neckline, like this. If you prefer a V shaped neckline, then decrease by an equal number of stitches each time, like 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. I will demonstrate decreases in the video. First, I will completely bind off all the stitches of the rib and start with the white yarn, where I will remove 3 stitches in the first row, 4 in the next row, then 2, then 1 by 1. Let's see what this looks like in practice. This is the form of the neckline. First, bind off the ribbing stitches, including 2 colored edge. That's right, here is the edge of the rib. Let's form the neckline. First, for the three stitches decrease, like we did the bind off already. Knit the first stitch and then bind it off. Repeat it with the second. and the third stitches and then just follow the pattern till the end of the row And go back with all pearl row almost till end. Here we are in the end of the pearl stitches row. We need to pearl all the stitches except the last one. It must be left on the same needle. Flip the work over. We have one stitch in the right hand, and this is the row of four stitches decrease, so we need to repeat the same actions as for the previous row, but for four stitches. Slip, here is a mistake, slip the first stitch and bind off. First, second, third, fourth. Well done! Continue to knit up till the end of the row 
and do pearl stitches almost to the end of the wrong side row. Here we are, in the end of the pearl stitches row, we need to purl all the stitches except the last one. It must be left on the same needle. Flip the work over. We have one stitch in the right hand, and this is the row of two stitches decrease. The first stitch is needed to be bind off, and then knit the second and bind it also off. Leave one stitch and flip the work. Bind off one stitch. And then follow the pattern till the end of the row and come back to the start to perform the last two decreases. Bind one stitch off and follow the pattern. This is our final decrease row. Bind one stitch off. Here is the neckline we have. Follow the pattern for three diamonds up to the purple line, where we will be knitting short rows for shoulder. This is a couple of centimeters left where we will be knitting short rows for the shoulder. The neckline is done and now we are here in the third part. Short rows for shoulder. Short rows are rows that aren't fully worked. Instead of knitting all the way to the end of the row, you stop short and leave some stitches unworked. To make the shoulder more anatomically correct, I will be decreasing the shoulder at the point of connection with the sleeve. In every right side row, I will use the following decrease structure. First, three stitches, then another three from the first three, then another four from the first and second. I will show the knitting technique on my cardigan. We won't knit up to the end. Firstly, we will stop at the third stitch from the end to create a twice stitch. Repeat the pattern almost until the rows end. There are four stitches left. We need to leave two stitches on the left needle, as the third one will be our indicator, the twice stitch. Slip it to the right needle and create a new loop by passing the yarn over the needle once from yourself and purl it with the next stitch. Congratulations! One out of three is done. You will have the same third stitch.
curl till the end and flip it to the front. Now we are going to repeat the same procedure, but we will move back 3 stitches from the twice stitch we've done. Let's meet up them. We need to knit until there are only 5 stitches left on the left needle. Flip your work. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Slip the 6th stitch to create a new loop by passing the yarn over the needle once from yourself and pull curl the next stitch. Congratulations! 2 out of 3 is done. You will have the same 6th stitch. Curl to the end and flip it to the front. This is row 5. We need to be moved for 4 loops from the last Y speech. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Knit the fourth and flip your work. Slip the stitch and create a new loop by passing the yarn over the needle once from yourself and purl the next stitch. Congrats! 3 out of 3 is done. Purl till the end and flip it to the front. This is row 7. We are going to knit this row until the first Y stitch. The twice stitch is so easy to knit here, just go through the front loop and knit them together. Knit till the second twice stitch and repeat. Knit together through the front loop. And the same for the last one. Flip the work, here we are going to bind off the front. Just do the standard binding off, creating the end. It's important to keep the stitches loose so your cast off edge will remain stretchy. We need to return stitches for the left front on the needle, so go through them with it till the marker. If you lost the marker and have no thirds where to stop, 
Don't worry, just count the number of diamonds for both fronts. We have 15 diamonds on the right front. The left front must have the same amount, 15. So you should stop here. Continue to knit the pattern of your left front till the neckline. See you there. I'll also share how I draw a yarn. I always make the weather's knot. Take the new thread from the new skein and put it on your right. Put the short thread on your left. Make such a loop and repeat the same actions after me. tight. Sometimes I make additional knots, but it isn't necessary, just not to worry about it. Repeat the same with the second thread. We have two knots now. They look big, but I have never seen them in my knitting on the front side. Ok, we've finished the right front, let's repeat the same for the left one. First, bind off the ribbing stitches, including two colored edge. That's right, here is the end of the ribbing. Let's form the neckline. First, for the three stitches, decrease like we did the bind off already. Knit the first stitch and then bind it off. Repeat it with the second and third stitches. And then just purl till the end of the row and go front row almost till end. Here we are in the end of the front stitches row. We need to knit all the stitches except the last one. It must be left on the same needle. Flip the work over. We have one stitch in the right hand and this is the row of four stitches decrease so we need to repeat the same actions as for the previous row but for four stitches. Slip the first stitch and bind off third fourth Well done! Oops! Continue purl till the end of the row and then work the right side almost till the end. Here we are in the end of the knit stitches row. We need to knit all the stitches except the last one. It must be left on the same needle. Flip the work over. We have one stitch in the right hand and this is the row of two stitches decrease. The first stitch is needed to be bound off. Then purl the second and bind it off. Lift one stitch and flip the walk. Bind one stitch off. And then follow purl stitch row till the end and come back to the start to perform the last two decreases. 
Repeat the next two rows the same, doing one decrease. Here we are and here is the neckline we have. Follow the pattern for 3 diamonds up to the purple line where we will be knitting shirt rows for the shoulder. The neckline is done and now we are here in the third part, shirt rows. Check out you've done the same amount of diamonds. Firstly, we will be decreasing at the start of the row from the wrong side. So I've knitted my previous row without two stitches. You should unravel them to have the same work and to be on the same point. I am slipping them to the left needle and now we will flip our work to the right side. Slip third stitch on the right front and by pacing the yarn over the needle once from back to yourself and knit the next stitch. So one, two and our twice stitch. Knit till the front row and come back doing purl row. There is 5 stitches left. Flip over and slip the 6th and create a new loop by pacing the yarn over the needle once from back to yourself and knit the next stitch. Knit till the front row and come back doing purl row to the middle of purl row. The first twice stitch, the second twice stitch, one, two, three, and purled four stitch. Slip the fourth stitch on the right front and by passing the yarn of the needle once from back to yourself and near the next stitch. Knit till the front row with all knitted stitches. Now we have the final row where we are going to knit this row until the first twice stitch. The twice stitch isn't so easy to knit here. Just repeat after me three times for the twice stitches.
Flip the work. Here we are going to bind off the front. Just do this tandem binding off, creating the end. It's important to keep the stitches loose so your cast off edge will remain stretchy. You know it. Here are our short rows on the shoulders. For the back panel, we need exactly the same way as the front panels. Until the red dotted line, we simply need the main pattern without any increases or decreases. Then we need to calculate the center from which we will need the neckline. In my case, the back panel took 107 stitches, approximately 45 centimeters. I don't know why I didn't notice that it doesn't match the front panel, but it turned out as it did, as they say. Slip two stitches from the armholes to the markers. We are going to knit them with the sleeves. The remaining stitches put on the sleeves and follow the part until the neckline. To calculate the center, I divided it into three parts and I have 36 stitches for each of these three parts. Since I need the size to match the front neckline, I will measure 39 stitches from each edge of the back panel so that there are exactly 30 stitches left for the neckline. I will start knitting the neckline exactly from the center, which is 15 stitch from the measured neckline. I will decrease in the same way as we did for the front panels. Repeat the same operations to create the neckline and short rows on the shoulders by your own. Here is our cardigan before sewing. Let's try to connect the necklines from the front and the back. The first and the second. Here we are. Everything is okay, but the last ones couldn't connect as I previously mentioned. I miscalculated while dividing. So I will need the back side of the slip longer to cover it. Just sew both panels together till this moment with a needle to make the vest. And then we are gonna do the sleeves. Now we are gonna to knit the sleeve from the back side of the work. We will knit just the back side of the sleeve first and when we reach the desired hay we will go rounds till the end. Let's go! Hide the ending thread first when we're pulling the new yarn for the back. Take the same needles, new yarn. Take out the marker and put the needle through the stitches. Add two stitches from each side.
We are gonna pick up stitches at the shoulder opening of the wrong side of the cardigan. Pick up the stitches till the sewing line. This is this sewing line. As you can see, the lower rows should be shorter than the up rows, so we will use short row technique that we have already used for shoulders to cover this. When we reach the desired height, we will sew the shoulder and the back sleeve and pick up the stitches of the front side, like we have done here. Here is the first short row. I've stopped before the first dotted line. Between dotted line we don't need. This is the second short row. And we need it till the needed length. This is how it looks like. I saw the shoulder and the back sleeve. Now pick up stitches from the front side. Looks like we reached the end of the front. So we need the first as the starting row. Just need. Connect the stitchers to make the round. Don't worry about this hole, we will cover it while hiding the threads. Continue the ribbing pattern. See you near the shoulder. Continue to follow the pattern to the desired length. We have a few threads here, hide them all. Almost invisible hole on the sleeve, as you can see, or you can see, 
It's beautifully done. So I've said, don't worry, it's almost invisible hole now. I can't even see it. Yeah, that's nice. We are ready to knit the collar with the same needles, but if you have the lower size, take them. I don't have any. We will pick up the stitches of the right front then back, then left front, like we started the sleeve using the same pattern. We will have something like this. I will take the dark color as almost all my edges are dark. Let's go! Just knit the first row. We are on the wrong side now. The color isn't strong as it's my hair, so the odd rows of ribbing I will do on the wrong side of cardigan. I've done it. Let's see. We have done the collar. The main pattern looks beautiful. It's super soft, amazingly soft. I can't find the words to describe it.
if you decide to follow the steps of the step-by-step -step tutorial please uh, photo the final result or the process i would be really happy to see it uh, here's my media nicknames that's all for today uh, the more tutorials are coming uh, so stay tuned like you